So hello friend in today's video we are going to discuss about CFIM1. CFIM1 is the compact fiber integrated module type 1 and its pack code is NTK504 QA. You can see here it's, this is the pack code. This is the full form of the CFIM1. So CFIM1 it means the CFIM type 1 and CFIM is stand for the compact fiber integrated module. So in this today's video we will discuss about the CFIM1, how, how many ports in the CFIM1 and how the internal connectivity of CFIM1 is uh, working and um, how the soft fiber of the each MPO port is connected with another MPO port. So we will discuss all these things in this today's video. So let's start. You can see here, this is the CFIM1. So this is the CFIM1 physical diagram and this is the uh, CFIM1 line diagram you can see. So we will discuss in detail how these MPO ports are connected to each other and uh, how the another equipment like RLA is used to connect and how the signal will flow from RLA to MPO port 1, 2, 3 and 4. So we will discuss all things in details in today's video. So let's start. You can see here CFM1 ports. So I have already mentioned this is the equipment inventory and 1, 2, 3, 4. These four are the MPO ports which are used to interconnect the RLA modules. You can see here, there, there are four port upgrade port, upgrade one, two, three, four. This port is not currently in used and this will be used in future, but in current version, it is not uh, going to be used. So we will focus on these four ports, MPO ports, how these ports are connected internally with each other and how it is used to connect the uh, external equipments. So let's start. You can see for CFM1 and TK504QA, four MPO ports for degree interconnect. It means for first quad degree, it means in first quad degree, there are four RLA and four RLA can be connected. So this M CFM1 is used to connect, interconnect four RLA modules, which are all in same quad degree. Four duplex LC upgrade ports for degree expansion, but currently it is not in. So let's see CFM1 features. You can see CFM1 are the passive modules and therefore do not require DC power. So this is totally the passive modules. It doesn't require any external uh, power, electric current, or you can say. CFM1 provides the pass-through interconnection between RLAs. As I've already told, from one CFM1, we can connect four RLA, but the condition is all the four RLA must be in the same quad group. So it is used to pass through the interconnection between the RLA the same degree quad group you can see here. CFM1 is used to pass through traffic within same quad degree. This is the again same statement. For CFM1, you can see four MPO ports for degree interconnect, four duplex LC upgrade port for expansion, which is not currently in use, but, but will be used in future. Loopback connectors are required if no fiber is being installed. Otherwise, connection validation feature will raise alarm. So there is a connection validation feature inside the uh, RLS is introduced. So if there will be no any loopback connector is installed on the port, it will show like the open port and it will show the connection validation alarms. Any CFM connector not equipped with a loopback module or fiber patch cord must be equipped with a dust cap. So let's see CFM1 NTK504QA block diagram. You can see this is MPO1, MPO2, MPO3 and MPO4 ports. This is the upgrade port 1, 2, 3, 4. You can see an MPO, here is the MPO port is used, which is 12 fiber MPO port. 12 fiber, it means there are six pair of fibers is used. So first pair of fiber is used for this port, you can see. The second pair of fiber is used to connect, you can see MPO port 1 connect MPO port 2 by this fiber pair. MPO port 2 can be interconnect with the MPO port 3 by this fiber sub fiber pair and MPO port 3 can be connected by the MPO 4 with these sub fibers. In the same way you can see there is another fiber pair which is used to connect from MPO 1 to MPO 3 and MPO 2 to MPO 4. Here you can see MPO 1 is connected to MPO 4. So you can see one, two, three, four, four fiber pair is used and uh, two fiber fiber pair is not used uh, from the 12 fiber pair, which is inside the MPU port. 
so you can see here one two three four all the ports are internally connected with each other you can see internally it is connected with each other mpo port one is connected to two three four mpo port two is connected with one three and four you can see mpo three is connected with mpo two mpo one and mpo four and mpo four is connected with you can see mpo with two with mpo three and with mpo port four uh, one so each MPO port, all the four MPO ports are internally connected with each other via the subfibers. You can see here. CFM1 internal connectivity. Let's see how the internal connectivity works. So this is CFM1. You can see this is MPO port 1, 2, 3, 4. As I have already told that in MPO port there are 12 fibers pair. Uh, sorry, the 12 fiber or you can say the 6 fiber pair is used. So this is the fiber pair you can see. These are the one, two, three, four, five, six. These are the fiber pairs. You can see here there are four fibers in each MPO port. So we will connect the RLA, four different RLA with the CFM1. So let's see how it is connected and how the signal will flow inside uh, the CFM1 and from the RLA. You can see here this is the RLA. This is the first RLA, this is the second RLA, RLA B. You can see this is the third RLA, RLA C, and this is the fourth RLA, or you can see RLA D. So in RLA is also uh, there are different switch ports. So I have taken only one switch port. So this is one switch port of the RLA, which is MPO port. You can see here. So let's see. Port number 10 is out. It's coming from port number three. Port number three means sub four. Subfiber three. So you can see here from subfiber ten, it is going out to fiber three. Again, it's going to port uh, five, subfiber six, connected to subfiber six, and going to subfiber seven. In the opposite way, you can see from six, it is going out. From seven, it is seven, it is internally connected with three, and three is going to ten. So here subfiber 3 is out from the for the RLA. You can see 3 is the out, 10 is the in, and 10 is internally connected with 6 here to uh, flow signal from RLA A to RLA D. You can see here, and from 6 out it is connected to subfiber 7. And the same way 6 is out and 7 is in, and 7 is internally connected with 3, and 3 is out and 10 is in. So this is the subfiber. So each numbering you can see like 3 and 10 these are the fibers of fibers so you can see rla1 what whatever the signal which is coming from this switch port or from this fiber sub fiber is going to this if i this sub fiber in this switch port of this rla so let's see for the second fiber pair you can see here this fiber pair is connecting to rlsc in the same way signal is from the sub fiber 4 out coming to port number nine and nine is internally connected with six so this signal is going via this internal connectivity to rlsc in the same way the signal from six out is connected to subfibers seven in and this is internally connected you can see here and again from four out it is going to subfiber nine in so you can see this rla a this switch port is connected with this switch port of RLSC via these subfibers. So whatever the signal which is coming on the RLA A, you can see that signal can be go on this RLA, can be go on RLSC. Let's see how it is going to RLA B. The signal you can see come going out from port uh, subfiber five, coming to subfiber eight, and this eight is internally connected with six. And from six out, it is going to seven in. From six of fiber out to seven in, you can see here, and this is internally connected. And now you can see from this five of fiber pair, it is connected to RLA B. So now you can see from whatever the signal which is coming to RLA A can be travel to RLA D, RLA C, and RLA B. In the same way, whatever the signal coming to RLA B can be moved to RLA A, RLA C and RLA D. Let's see. So this of fiber is used to connect this upgrade port and these two pair of the fiber is not used. 
So you can see in the CFM1, if it is connected with RLA, three subfiber is used. You can see this fiber pair, this fiber pair, and this fiber pair. So this is these two this fiber two fiber pair is not used, and this is not used when the RLA is connected to CFM1. So you can see here now RLA B is connecting to RLA D via this subfiber. You can see. So this is the transmit. 3 is the transmit subfiber, 10 is the in, and 10 is internally connected with 5, 5 is out, and 8 is in. In the same way, 5 is out, 8 is in, and it is connected internally with 3, 3 is out, and 10 is subfiber in. So you can see here, RLA B is connected via this fiber pair to RLA D. In the same way, you can see 4 out, 9 in, 5, 8, then 5 out. Two subfiber eight subfiber pair eight and you can see subfiber pair eight is connected to four four out and nine in. In, the, in this way you can see why this subfiber pair or you can see why this fiber pair RLA B is connected to RLA C. So you can see here RLA B is now connected now connected with RLA A by this fiber pair by this fiber pair green you can see it is connected to RLA C by pink fiber pair you can see it is connected to RLA D. In the same way, now you can see RLA C can be communicated with RLA B by this fiber pair. It can be communicated to RLA A. Now, let's see. This is connected with RLA D. So you can see three out, ten in. That is internally connected with four, four out, nine in, four out, nine in. <laughs> then it is connected to three and three out, ten in. So you can see by this fiber pair, it is connected to RLA D. So now you can see this MPO port, MPO port 1, internal, this is the internal connectivity which is inside the CFM1. And now when this MPO port is, uh, this MPO port is connected with MPO port 1 of the CFM1, RLA, this switch port of RLA is connected with MPO port uh, 1 of CFM1, then whatever the signal coming to RLA, it can be go to RLA D, RLA uh, you can see RLA C and RLA B in the same way. So now you can see RLA A, RLA B, RLA C, RLA D. These four RLA can be communicate with each other via this CFM. So this is the basically use of the CFM one to interconnect the RLA four different RLA within which are which are or which are all on the same quad group. So these RLA A, RLA B, RLA C, RLA D in the same quad group. So you can see whatever the signal coming to RLA A can we go to RLA B, C, D, whatever the signal coming to RLA D can we go in RLA C, B, A. So you can see here this is the four direction you can see. Whatever the signal coming to D, it can go in this direction, in this direction, and in this direction. So this is all about RLA and CFM connectivity. Hope you will understand. If any query, you can comment. So this is about RLA and CFM connectivity and how it internally works by the subfibers and in the same way you can see this fiber is used for upgrade port in the same way this fiber is used for the upgrade port and this fiber is used for the upgrade port now you can see here out three three subfiber is used for out ten is for in four is for out nine is for in five is for out eight is for in six is for out seven is for in in the same way six is out seven in 5 out, 8 in, 4 out, 9 in, and 3 out, 10 in. So you can see 3 is out, 10 is in. In the same way, you can see 3 is out, 10 is in. 3 is out, 10 is in. So you can uh, check on any fibers. If you are checking about 6, 7, 6, so you can see 6 is out, 7 is in, 6 is out, 7 is in, 6 is out, 7 is in. So this is like the configuration, or you can say, uh, the nomenclature of the fiber so which fiber is out which fiber is in so this is all about rla and cfm1 connect so now let's see the physical parameters so this is cfm1 this is cfm2 this is cfm3 this is a comparison basically you can see this is the pack code this is the power budget this is the weight is equally of all the cfm1 2 and 3 this is a return loss this is all about cfm1 explanation Thanks for watching.